How you doing? I have a lot to cover, a lot to talk about. We have a lot of new things happening to share with you, which I will do in a few minutes. But we are building a 395 for my friend Dan. We already got a 372 done. I'm going to ship both saws at once. If I don't get this done quick enough, we're just going to ship the 372 to him. But you see me do, I don't know how many 372s in all kinds of configurations. And we're not done with them, believe it or not. But these 394s and 395s are a little different animal. Okay, uh, be prepared for that when you start in on them. Um, I guess the first thing you need to understand about the 395, technically, they are a quad loop, which you can see by the bumps there, just like 372. But see how they enter. See how it enters? Enters different. Enters like 394 does, or the 272, or a bunch of the steels do the same thing. But they truly do have primary and secondary transfers, which I should show you that. Uh, see? They, they do have them. So let's just call it a quad loop. Even though it's just partially, but it's got the most important parts of a quad loop. Primary and secondary transfers. Kind of nice. Okay. When we want to get more air and fuel above the top of the piston to fire these saws, there's things that we have to know about these windowed pistons. Okay. To be able to do a proper port work. Okay. Now, if you can see how wide the window is, and then let me get this light moved just a bit so I can get it in your eyes. Maybe I can get a little bit of a... See, this is nowhere as near as wide as what these windows are, okay? It's just not. So, we're not going to make gains easy we're going to sneak up on the gains okay the one thing you have to keep in mind is where your intake is okay right here's your intake see how close that is to that intake yeah i know we could do something there and i'm not going to because i tell you quite honestly it isn't going to do a darn bit of good to freaking uh do a little trench there Unless we had reeds, then we'd do that. I would actually trench from the intake to the transfer if I had reeds. But I don't have reeds. I'm not doing it. These are piston ported. I can widen that some. But I have to keep in mind that when I'm widening the lower transfer on this saw, not to interfere on the intake side. The exhaust side isn't as critical. Okay, the exhaust side is the side where the primary is on. These, as far as I'm concerned, they had a little bit too much secondary and not enough primary. So we're going to cover that here in a few minutes. But let's cover what we need to do to the piston to even make it worth it. Okay. This window... Well, do me no good to widen this a lot. It won't. Uh, I, I got to see what my transfer is going to be. I'm actually going to tailor this particular piston to wider on the primary side than the secondary side, okay? Because this feeds one, this feeds the other, okay? So what I'm going to do is, is carry you through this. These are factory. They're, this particular piston ended up with the opening from here to here was approximately 300,000 or 360 thousandths. Okay. So do your data checks. You know, uh, just get yourself a set of uh, verniers. Get fairly good at using them. They're not complicated. You're not going, you know, you're not trying to get so perfect that it's ridiculous. You have to remember what's going on with these uh, windowed pistons is this bar is strength, okay? This bar is strength. This bar is strength. 
do not remove your strength. It's easier to go on this side, in this side, on the outside. But do get rid of this flashing. You see it. Do get rid of it and clean that up. Now, you see the distance from the edge of that boss to, to right here. Okay, I've already got this one mostly done. If you notice, it it's, comes up fairly close to that boss right there. Okay, now I opened this one up 100 thousandths. Okay, we want 100 thousandths wider on this side, okay? Uh, but I did not cut here, and I did not cut here. I haven't made my uh, opening for my primaries, which I'm going to lean on my primaries on this one just a little bit. Um, more for any reason than I can show you why. When a saw is already run, and we are using OEM top end on this saw because it's in beautiful shape. Um, so we're going standard bore. You'll be impressed what you can get out of a standard bore flat top saw in these big boogers. Okay, this right here wash here and here are coming out of your secondaries. This is the wash coming out of your primaries. And if you notice, that wash ain't exactly even, isn't it? So what I do is I, I want to see why. Well, I did. Um, that cylinder, when it's cast, is slightly rotated, which is, this is what happens sometimes, especially in a, a series of saws that run as long as these 395s have. They've made them a lot of years. The molds wear out. Okay, so what I'm going to do when I do my transfers on that side on the uh, primary transfer, I'm going to get that evened up so that we have th this wash as good as this wash. You can see there's never, but you see them secondaries is really doing their job. Okay, now I need to explain what's going on in all these saws. What happens is, is the firing cycle, this goes to the exhaust, the exhaust gas gets pushed out, okay? When the intake charge enters the transfers, the transfers close, it billows around like this and comes up this way. And it does the same thing here. Now, remember, the spark plug is aimed toward the exhaust. But if you see that wash where it would meet to here and here, that looks pretty good right in there. We got a nice post in there like we're supposed to. But when we get these transfers working in this, uh, the primaries, you'll see this get wider and go a little bit past uh, center to right here. This is what you're going to do when you're reading these, okay? Um, this little things are important to read that wash lines. Um, and the 372, they're all over the map. So you, you, just, you just get used to it. I'm going to cover this a little more in another video. Because there's so much more going on here than meets the eye. It really is. But most importantly, remember that what I did was I took out approximately 100,000. I did it mostly on this side. I cleaned this side up. On the primary side, we'll be, we'll be widening that one just a little more. But I cleaned them up, come to a known measurement. On two of them, I have to finish these two, which you see I didn't do anything there, you know. I haven't done them yet. But I have these. Now, these sharp edges, knock your sharp edges off. Knock these points off. Let that, let that saw have a chance. All them rough edges like that will make a mark in your cylinder. They will wear. I knocked this edge. I break that edge nicely. Just nicely break it and make that fairly smooth, okay? Now, this piston, I weighed it, ended up 102.45 grams. Now, I left one circlip in, so it's got the weight of the circlip with it, okay? So, this is covering that piston. And let's just see how much further we get, but I got something to talk to you about. And, uh, and those of you that uh, aren't subscribed, 
when you like the content good enough, subscribe. That way you don't miss anything. Um, but I have about five minutes I need to talk to you about something. Sawfest. I'm going to Sawfest in October. It's in the middle of Ohio. I would love to meet a bunch of you guys if it's convenient. I know in today's world, the economy's rough. And with this COVID thing, I've been cooped up too long, guys. There's two shows that you can see me at this year. Uh, one is Boonville, which is right here in New York, just above Syracuse. You're going to see me there. That's in August. I'll I'll get the dates to everything uh, dialed in for you. And I'm going to tell you how to find uh, Sawfest and Boonville uh, uh, in another video. Um, probably Monday or Tuesday's video, I'll have a lot more information about Sawfest. But you're going to see not just me there. You're going to see Indiana Dog. He's going to be there. I, I I think Bell Hopper, maybe. I don't know. I haven't talked to him or anything. Bell Hopper, if you meet him, he's a one act, but nice guy. He He's just a giant teddy bear, and he'll do anything for you. A lot of you out there know him and like him. Uh, I think the world of him. I've reached out to a couple other YouTubers that I know personally to see if they'll come. Um, we'll see. What Sawfest is, it's just to get together for... A, a more of a lower scale competition so that it's like when you get the information you might want to take your saw you might want to uh, go out there and make your three cuts and just see how good you are um i'll warn you in some of the classes you're probably going to have to run against uh, uh some of them uh steel timber board sports series guys there's a couple of them i think are coming there may be more i don't know but this isn't about who wins or loses. This is about getting together with like-minded people that are darn nice. I've already vetted these guys. I already know. These are people I want to be associated with. I'll tell you that right now. Sawfest in October. This is this is where the game's going to be played. Um, I happen to tell you right now, as long as something don't uh, fall apart, I'm building a saw for Sawfest. Uh, it's going to be... An old 46 steel. Okay. If that falls apart, I'll build something else. But right now, I'm planning on building an old 46 steel that will be raffled. Uh, I'm giving it, donating it to Sawfest. It will be raffled uh, to help them generate money to put the show on. They have a deep expenditure on putting these shows on. Uh, it, it, we want to help them out. Let's just do that. So, I have, I'll probably in the middle of summer, uh, have that built. I'm behind as heck right now, trying to play catch up, and it's working. I'm, I'm, I'm getting caught up. Um, sometimes I got to stop making videos and start making saws. That's just what's been going on. So don't get too concerned if I got your saw, and it's, it's, I, you haven't heard nothing in a week. It's, it's, things are going well. They really are. So. That being said, let's look at some of the things that you have to worry about with these 395s. Um, you don't have a lot of area here on the size to seal. So when you clean your cases, you make darn sure that that is nicely uh, cleaned and evenly matched with your cylinder. I'm telling you, that's important. Uh, it's it's very important. This particular saw was a good running saw. Actually, had a base gasket leak. Okay, uh, it it does it happens. We're not using base gaskets. Okay, another thing is when you use the motorcycle engine assembly silicone to put your saw back together, which is the best you can get in my eyes. I know there's a lot of things you guys use. This is tried and true. If they've used it on motorcycles for this many generations, I'm going to use it too. Um, I did notice somebody on another uh, video I'd mentioned, I'll never use it again. They had a leak, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'll tell you what, it doesn't like oil. It doesn't like debris. It doesn't like water. If you want that to seal good, chemically clean the bottom of your base and 
uh, your uh, saw case ever at times, okay? You have to. Gerald break clean out, spray it on your paper towel, and do that. Most importantly, this is the one that'll get you in trouble without realizing it, okay? You can use this on your base and on uh, your saw and still have a leak. And I'll tell you why. It's from your fingers. Wash your fingers. Hey, I use this stuff. If you guys are, have delicate hands and no calluses, you might want to use warm, soapy water. This is... I mean, Christ, I use this for mouthwash. What do you want, right? Okay, here, here's something neat. I'm going to show you something. Sawfest is having a cheap saw build-off. A lot of these get-togethers do that. They'll pick one saw just, just for a lark. Everybody competes with it. And uh, it, it makes a just a fun, fun get-together. Okay, um, here's what they're doing. A little pool and wild thing. Yes. So I asked him the rules. Well, you can do anything to sell you want to. What about the gas? Oh, you can run any fuel you want to. Oh, man, don't tell the old iron horse this kind of thing. I planned on doing something crazy. But you know something? I don't want to ruin it for other people. So I'm going to build what I think will be just a, on a level that the better saw, better builds. It'll at least hang in there. Um, I've done my winning. I'm still winning with you guys, and I know it. So what can we do to a little 40cc? This one happens to be a 42cc because it's a 2375. You can do you can look it up. They're cheap saws to buy. They're scary because you wondered how long they were last when they bought them. I've never had one in the shop. I've never worked on one. And I'm gonna tell you another thing is some of these guys are gonna have an advantage on me because I don't build saws under 70 cc's as a rule. So some guys have a real touch for this, uh, these smaller cc saws, and they impress me. And you're going to meet them, like Charlie Briscoe. Charlie Briscoe has been talking to me on WhatsApp quite a bit. And he builds these Echo 4910s, and they're just nuts. And here a while ago, he showed me one. I was like, wow, I was watching it because it's like nuts. Just crazy, just crazy. So he got some pretty good horsepower out of one. I'm going to show you a clip of his best 4910 build. Uh, he put reeds in one, in a 50cc echo. He put a freaking reed cage, and he pulled it off. Um, I gave him a, the, the tight, <laughs> excuse me. <coughs> I gave him the tiniest little bit of advice, just the tiniest bit. And uh, he took that. And he made a saw. And I'm going to interject this. I was going to wait till Friday or Saturday's video. But I'm going to inject this in today's video. Uh, hopefully, I get it figured out how to do it. If you don't see it, just remember I mentioned it. And we'll get it in another video. But uh, uh, he run two saws. That was as good 390 uh, or, or uh, uh, 4910. His hottest build he can do without reeds, and then his reed saw. And that's reed saw is scary. I think you're going to really enjoy it. <laughs> okay, I have both windows on both sides done. I've deburred, I've rounded my edges, I've got rid of the flashing in the center, I got rid of the flashing across here on both sides, these are all stress risers, okay, and I will heat treat this piston, but I'm not done with it yet, what I need to do now is know exactly what my opening is going to be for my lower transfers. And then I can set, remember, we talked about that. I'm going to set that uh, up 
where we have a little more primary transfer. Okay? And that's something that I, I will just kind of putter at and make that happen. I'll continue showing these uh, uh, numbers, the work, and everything. There's a lot of interest in the 395s. 394s are slightly different. We will be doing one, but you know which one. Well, Tiger Stripe one. But that's for me, so it's not going to be crazy port work. Okay, this is the part you guys are looking for. What are we going to do for numbers? What do we already have? So let's talk that. Okay, I'm not going to run a um, base gasket. The original gasket actually squished the 22 thousandths. My squish now with nothing is 28. Okay? So add 22 thousandths to that and come up with your number. That's what the squish was. These bigger saws gain compression really fast when you get rid of that base gasket and especially if you put a pop-up in i'm not doing a pop-up in this i like that factory piston i like the factory cylinder we use them whenever we can we don't have a choice on a lot of saws i use highway stuff you guys know it um with very good luck by the way very good luck it's a uh, highway over the last five years have came so far they're, they're very, very good. There's a stigma amongst some builders. Oh, I got to have OEM. No, you don't. You just don't know it yet. You'll find out someday after you spend a bag full of money trashing cylinders like I do sometimes. Yeah, you don't think I don't. Okay. With no base gasket, the exhaust opened first ray light at 104. All right. The intake opened at 282 degrees after bottom dead center. Well, it's actually, uh, it was 282 from top dead center. This is where that opened. And it closed at 72 degrees after top dead center. Okay, so I got that straight. That was a total opening of 150. On the intake, that's the only thing that I care about. Where What's the total opening? I don't like saying, well, open it at such and such a degree. You don't know. A bore stroke affects things funny. You can get it wrapped in your head a little better, or I can. You do it however you want to, but this is me. I'm doing it my way. So we're at 150 degrees total opening. Fairly conservative. Okay. The transfers open at 124 degrees after top dead center. Okay, what that meant is 20 degrees after the exhaust got first ray light, the transfers open. I like that just a little further. I want to see 25 degrees on this particular saw uh, open just a little later. We're going to give it a lot of flow up to transfers. I want them open a little later. That's why I do that. Okay. And... Piston weight, we did not care about piston weight in, in this saw uh, one bit. It happened to be, before I started, 102.5 grams, okay? With the work you've seen here that I've already done, we lost two and a half grams. That's not a lot of material to take out then, okay? Quite honestly. So we got it down to 100. I predict by the time that I get Whatever uh, I take for that window, because I'm going to stretch the uh, primary side just a little wider. I bet you we get down to 99, 98 grams, something like that. So we'll end up, that's pretty good for this. I mean, this is a pretty big piston. Long skirt thing. Make sure when you do this kind of work, anywhere that that you've deburred take the time to go around that with a little precision file if you got them or spend a lot of time with a piece of uh, 180 sandpaper really really make sure there's nothing absolutely nothing you want smooth okay i gave you the numbers if you've wrote them down like i know a lot of you probably have you want to know where i'm going to head with this Okay, I'll tell you where I'm going to head. 
The exhaust opened at 104. I'm going to go to 100, exactly 100. That's it right there. That'll give me what I want for transfer opening, okay? And what we to end up with totally, I'll, I'll share it with you. I want to see 25 degrees. I wouldn't mind just a little more, but let's just see where that lands. Exhaust is going to open at 100. Okay, my total opening on my intake was, before I started, 150. I want to carry this to 157 degrees. 158 is fine, but I, I want to see 157 on this saw, okay? Now, the one thing you already know, when I get done, it ain't going to look like that anymore, is it? No, it's not. Now, the exhaust on these, if you can see that, a lot of people widen them. You know what? I ain't widen that. I'm going to tell you why. It's actually wider on the inside than it is outside by just, just a smidgen. I mean, it might even be just straight. But I'm going to reshape that some. So there, there's the before. Um, I will be doing a fair amount on this intake. Okay, see how wide that intake is? I am not widening it any more than that, but I will reprofile this, and you're going to see that in the next video, okay? Uh, which I'll probably be making some of them clips today, and uh, away we go. Okay, now that I got you guys' attention on that saw fest, and you know I'm going to build this little wild thing, and we can do anything we want. I'm not getting carried away with the saw compared to what I know some of these guys will do. I I, I don't want to be the one that wins it. I mean, if, if I do, it's just going to be just crappy luck. But I want to, I want to enter just, just because I've never built one of them little things. After what Charlie Briscoe does to them 4910s, my God, do I even have a chance? So I want a saw that's got style points. And I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a carburetor that I've actually had for a while and I want to see just what's possible with it and I might not run this carburetor because it's going to be problematic okay yeah it's got a bowl on it you know what that means there's no internal fuel pump and that's a 13 millimeter hole and that small of a saw I think that's perfect I think it's perfect that's why I want to run this. I was going to bore this carburetor, by the way, and put it on something else, which you guys could probably guess. Because I have no fuel pump, I will be putting a fuel pump on this saw. Now, if you look, yeah, that's a flat slide carburetor. Yep, it sure is. I will be jetting this. It's going to be interesting. First, I got to know what jets this is. Oh, this is a high-performance uh, carburetor. The one thing that's nice, because I have to add a fuel pump, and I'm going to share this build with everything, every bit of it, no holes barred, show you exactly what I do to it, but I'll keep it laid back in a little bit, but I, I, I want to have fun. This is why I'm going out there, is I want to have fun. I want to be with you guys at Sawfest just having a ball. I'll probably do a little chainsaw sharpening, and uh, I might even sharpen some of your saws. And, and I found that if I sharpen somebody's saws that's having a little trouble, they go put it in a little wood and try it. When they come back, they uh, I got their attention, and they learn really fast. I can teach most of you in 10 minutes how to greatly increase your sharpening skills. Just take it from an old veteran logger like me that's broke down and busted. We still we still have a few things we uh, know how to do. But I have to do this with jets instead of adjustments. That complicates things on small two strokes, believe me. But think dirt bike. Just think dirt bike. That's all you got to do. Just think dirt bike. I more than likely will run at least alcohol. 
Let me tell you about running alcohol, and you'll see this from other guys. They think, well, I'm just going to dump alcohol in my saw and go like hell. That ain't it, man. Sometimes you'll slow your saw up. Timing. You got to know where your timing is. Most importantly, expression. I'm going to tell you what my experience is from running alcohol, drag racing, in big block Chevys. You know, if you don't have 11 and a half or 12 to 1 static compression ratio, don't even think it. Well, if you have that much compression in a chainsaw, you probably ain't going to roll it over very good. So if you see somebody that says they're running alcohol and he goes, ying, 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 it, it, you didn't get no gains. You don't get gains with alcohol until you got a lot of compression. That's the way, it, that's just life. That's the way it is. But there's something else that's alcohol-based that you don't have to have ram-jam kind of compression to run it. Nitromethane. I think we should build a wild thing as a nitromethane saw. It does not require a lot of compression. It does not. Not bag pulls. Just enough is all. So you have to run so much nitro through these to do it. Yeah, this carburetor was a valid excuse to play with nitro. And nitro scary. And I have run it in saws before. It's problematic like you've never seen. If you get your jetting right one day, the next day it's not. This is what you deal with. A carburetor needs to be easy to work on, easy to take off, easy to change jets. You learn by taking your, uh, 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 your temperature and humidity. You learn where to jet the darn thing and your elevation. That's the three things you learn how to do. And you'll develop a graph chart for running alcohol or nitromethane that you can go right straight to and know where you're at with this style of carburetor. Uh, chainsaw carburetors can run it too, but you've got to have a backer pump. Uh, with alcohol or and especially nitromethane, uh, you use so darn much uh, nitromethane, it's just ridiculous. It's You might as well have a garden hose in it. The saw's got to make three cuts. That's all it's got to do. The problem is it's got to have some test cuts. Then you got to show your buddies. And this other guy heard about it. He wants to see it. So probably what's going to end up, we're going to end up building two or three of these motors just so that we got one good one saved just, just for SawFest. I hope you guys like this video. I hope you like the direction this is going. If this doesn't work, we'll just find something else that does. You know the deal. Stay tuned. Goodbye.